G'day viewers, welcome to another video from Alex Does DIY. My name's Alex, obviously. Um, so, as the uh, title of this video suggests, I'm going to go over the complete electrical system that I've installed in the bus and has now been uh, certified by a licensed electrician and uh, has been deemed safe, um, no electrocution, and uh, completely legal. Um, and I, I found in researching things to do this installation, because uh, you know I will give this uh, disclaimer: I'm not an electrician. Um, I do believe, certainly in Australia, which is the land of red tape and legislation, that it's illegal if you're unlicensed or not a licensed electrician to do this sort of work. So, um, it, you know, take it upon yourself if you want to do what I've done. Um, but uh, anyway, I found that in researching to do this installation, um, certainly on YouTube um, and on the internet generally, there was, there was a lot of um, incorrect information or very limited information. Um, so I'm going to run you through everything from start to finish um, on what of the way I've done it anyway. And um, hopefully it'll give you some information or whatever you need to know to go and head and do it yourself. So starting at the top there we've got our solar panels. There's three solar panels mounted up here um, and they are 330 watt panels so that gives me a combined total of um, 990 watts um, which is uh, as so far seems to be quite sufficient. Um, they put out uh, each panel puts out 60 volts at 75 amps, I think it is, and I've got them um, connected in uh, parallel so that I'm still getting 60 volts off those panels rather than 180. So the cabling from the three solar panels on the roof then comes down into uh, this breaker box. I've got one breaker for each of the panels, um, just got those labelled there, rear, middle and front, um, and these are double pole breakers, so everything on your motorhome um, for legislative purposes, and I'm sure there's a good reason behind it, needs to be double pole, which basically means that both your positive and negative, or your active and neutral, both wire through your breakers. So by doing it this way too, um, there's obviously a certain level of protection there if there's ever a short on one of the panels. Um, if I needed to remove a panel or work on a panel for any reason, I can just switch that panel off and know that it's, um, it's uh, no longer feeding into the system. And then the cables that provide power then into the charge controller I have running down here. Now this is a 25 millimeter square cable. So that positive and negative cable from that breaker box then comes up into here. This is the uh, MPPT charge controller. Um, this particular one is made by a Swedish company called uh, Studer and it's called a Vario Track. if you want to look that up. I'm not, certainly not any sort of solar expert, um, so uh, yeah, I'd suggest you, um, if you want information on that, go to their website and uh, have a look and see, uh, um, uh, you know, specifics on this particular thing. It seems to be doing a good job so far. I do have, I do have a 100 amp fuse mounted there as per the installation instruction. So it was fairly simple um, installation. You've got your positive and negative that come in through here from your solar panels and then positive and negative run out and go through the fuse into the battery. You've also got on here um, a couple of auxiliary cables one of those goes to a remote control, which I'll show you in a moment, and the other one goes to a, a what's called an auxiliary relay, 
that's used for what well, you can use it for a whole range of things and I'll explain that when I show you that in just a moment so this here is the remote control center for the charge controller um, it does a whole bunch of stuff that I'm, I don't understand nor need to understand um, the display on here at the moment is telling me what phase the battery charge is in um, how much power it's I think coming from the panels uh, how much voltage I've got in the battery and I think you know, that's usage or something I'm not quite sure but um, yeah it's I, I sort of look at it every now and again just to monitor the charge in the battery more than anything else um, but it does a whole range of things you can get quite technical with it um, you can it will do data logging and make reports and do all sorts of things you can change um, what uh, information is displayed on this panel also and from here also you control the what's called the auxiliary relay um, and basically it's a contact no contact type relay and so you you can tell it to make contact or, or um, remove contact at a, at a given data point of any one of these or, or many 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 more there are hundreds of things and again if you want to know about it um, look it up the auxiliary relay I'm using to uh, remotely control um, the generator so what I've done through here is I've got it set that when the voltage drops to 11.7 volts um, the auxiliary relay then makes contact between two wires which automatically starts my generator the, once the generator starts the inverter that I have that I'll show you in a moment then um, sends power from the generator through the system to operate everything plus charge the battery as well and then through here also I've got set a limit of uh, I think at the moment it's about 12.8 but I'm going to turn that up a bit so that it will then turn the generator off so it's it's really a completely remote hands-off system as far as the generator goes so you know if it's a hot night and I've got the uh, air conditioning running or something like that and the battery runs low and there's no sun to uh, charge everything up the generator will automatically turn on without me having to do anything and then turn off again when the battery is charged. Right so this here is the auxiliary relay um, there's two relays there I'm only using the one on the left um, and there's the two wires that come out so um, when the when the battery has got is above 11.7 volts this relay is open or I'm using the open connection and then when the battery drops to 11.7 it makes contact with these these two wires go out to the generator which I'll show you next and um, it starts the generator automatically to charge the batteries so this is a generator that I've got mounted on the back of the bus um, it's a Honda 3 kilowatt inverter generator um, yeah it does a great job it's relatively quiet um, I've had no issues with it so far certainly delivered plenty of power when I've needed it I use this um, I weld with it um, and I've, yeah I've certainly had no no problems at all and it's one of their, their quiet range in this box I have lined it with um, sound absorbing material all the way around and um, I'll start it up so you can see sort of try and gauge how uh, noisy it is Generator, that's pretty good. Runs on unleaded fuel. 
Um, I think the tank capacity is somewhere around five or six litres. Just to show you around the control side. So this is where I've got a lead permanently plugged in that goes into the bus. And these are the two wires that do the automatic start from the auxiliary relay. So this is the battery that I'm using. It's a 12 volt AGM deep cycle battery called Intimidator. Um, I believe it's made, oh yeah, made in the US. I've only got one at this stage. I would like to add a second one. Um, yeah, I haven't had any issues, but obviously two is gonna be better than one. Um, it's just a, an expense thing. In Australia, these, the cheapest you get one of these for is about a thousand bucks, $1,100. So um, it weighs 71 kilos, so it's not light. And uh, so I do plan on getting a second one to give you a comparison for size. That's the bus battery. <laughs> there are one of them. There's two of those because there's a 24 volt system in the bus. So yeah, that's the battery I'm using at the moment. Um, charges really quickly, um, especially on a bright sunny day with those nearly a thousand watts of solar panels. Um, if you run it down low, um, yeah, it does not take long at all to charge. So the next piece of equipment then is this. This is my inverter um, made by a company called Sterling Power Products called a Pro Combi S. It's a pure sine wave inverter and charge controller. Um, it also has, there's a data cable coming out there for a remote control that I'll show you in, the mo in a moment. These two cables here, positive and negative, come directly from the battery. The positive runs through a 400 amp fuse, which is there. And that cable is 75 millimeter square cable. Let's see if I've got some. The 75 millimeter square cable is quite a heavy gauge, of course. Um, there it is there. You can see it's about as thick as my finger. Now, it is recommended that in the um, installation instructions, you can only go down to a 75 millimeter square cable if the run to your battery is quite short. Mine is, um, my run to my battery would probably be about, oh, no more than 500 millimeters, half a meter, or 50 centimeters. Um, and even using this cable, when I've got, say, the air conditioner running, you can feel the warmth through that positive lead. It's not hot, or, or there's no issue there. Um, so if it's any longer than that, I'd certainly recommend going to a 90 millimeter square cable. Um, I couldn't find any. I was originally going to, I tried looking for that. I couldn't find any. I found this stuff on eBay. I'm sure there's places where you can get it. Um, but yeah, certainly don't go any less. It did say, though, if you can't get um, the correct size cable, you can run multiple lengths of thinner cable. So if you want to go to a 90 millimeter square but you can't find it, it does say in the instructions you can run, for example, three lengths of 30 millimeter square cable. It's just as good. So this is the unit that provides me with 240 volt AC electrics for the bus. This is also the unit that controls charging of the battery from the um, generator. So I'll show you on the other side where that runs in. So you can see there the one on this, uh, this side, that's power coming out and goes to the fuse box. I'll show you in a moment. And this is coming also from the fuse box, but that's power in from the generator. This here is the remote controller for that unit. Um, it's fairly basic, nothing nothing like the 
solar charge controller so you've basically got three settings power saver auto charge only or power saver off um, I have power saver off that it I initially I put it on um, power saver auto um, the first thing I tried to use with the power was to charge my mobile phone and the charge was on off on off on off on off completely so since then I've had it on power saver off and yeah that works for me um, it shows me here inverter on and then you've got um, if this lights on charge on and if it's flashing charge only so it's not charging at the moment because well because there's no power going into it so the battery's fully fully charged anyway and then there's a an alarm box there's a whole series of lights on the inverter that tell you its condition right so this is the main circuitry or circuit board where everything comes through I've got both 240 volt and 12 volt items all sort of controlled through here. So this is my main lot of uh, breakers for the bus. Um, so I'll run through these. Right, so you for regulation you need to have a, a main safety switch or what's called an RCD, a residual current device. Um, it will trip in the event of any earth shortage and cut power to everything so um, it's imperative that you have one of these um, it's just a must so if you've got a test button there you can test it to make sure that it's working that cuts power to everything next I've got a 20 amp breaker which is a two pole breaker again same with everything in the bus so all your breakers all your power points have to be two pole so both your active and neutral go through the breaker that's what two pole means so this is a 20 amp breaker now the way this works is the feed from my generator comes up through here goes through this breaker first comes up and goes round to this selector switch from that selector switch it then goes down to the uh, into the inverter um, what this selector switch does um, I don't think you'll be able to read it from there I might give you a close-up surely but um, you basically got an off position in the middle on the left it says shore which is uh, like a land based connection I've got a um, I can plug a cable in on the outside of the bus if I'm say at a caravan park or at someone's house and I want to use their power I could switch that to shore and then what happens as soon as I plug it in from the outside and power feeds through here um, it then goes into the inverter and provides power to the bus charges the battery and everything like that if I change it to have it set to generator which is what I'll generally have if I'm out and about on the road or camped up somewhere where there's no external power source and so um, when the auxiliary relay here triggers the generator it automatically runs turns the generator on runs through the breaker down here through this switch into the inverter and then the inverter 240 power comes back and, and goes through the RCD first so everything has to all power supply has to go through the RCD first the only exception is these two breakers here so the first one generator goes through there first to the switch and the second one which is a 16 amp breaker um, again double pole um, that's from your, your outside shore power we'll run through here goes down to the switch to the inverter and then back up through the RCD now this has to be a 16 amp breaker no more because with your shore power it's going to run through its own breaker and you don't want to have a breaker that's rated higher than the one that you're sourcing your power from because if I had a 20 amp breaker here and it it, it, I could run things here that won't blow that breaker but would blow the breaker at the, where the power supply is coming from so if you're in a caravan park you're going to piss off a lot of people if you keep cutting your power um, so these next ones here I've got 
16 amp breaker which is for the um, circuit around the bus that does all of the power points power points again all being double pole they say double pole on the on this on the face of the power point again that's required for legislation uh, the next one here is for the air conditioner alone and this one here and these are all 16s as well 16 amps this one here is for the water heater now in terms of what cabling you need to use um, you need to use uh, for your longer runs, so my, my main circuit that runs around the bus, I've used 2.5 millimeter, three core, double insulated cable. Um, I've yet, I did use a mixture of uh, flat ribbon cable and also flex cable. Um, I highly recommend you just, it's because what I had, but just stick to flex cable. It's uh, it's a lot easier to run. So flex cable is your is your round stuff like an extension cord. Um, your flat ribbon cable is more like the stuff you would get in um, more like the stuff you would get in your house. It's just a bit stiffer and harder to work with. I have run all the wiring in the bus through this um, flexible conduit stuff. That's not required for legislation. Um, it's just something I did um, just for a bit of bit of added protection on that cable. Um, if you're not using it, just make sure that wherever your cable run through a hole in the metal that you might have drilled, you've got to put a grommet in there, um, a rubber grommet to protect that cable. Um, but I just felt safer with um, using the flexible conduit. Other things I'll talk about too with regards to um, wiring that I had to find out. Now this, this actually threw me. So on the bus um, I've got the original factory 24 volt system that starts the bus and runs the bus electrics. I've got 12 volt items um, such as um, my lighting, um, you can't see that, there's a light above here. Um, lighting and the exhaust fan and everything in the bathroom and what else is 12 volt? Um, oh, the igniter on the stove, which I haven't wired up yet, that's 12 volt. So all this stuff here, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got a couple of rows of 12 volt circuit breakers here so this is all 12 volt stuff all this cabling down here um, and then obviously I've got the uh, 240 volt AC stuff um, everything earths to the body of the bus which not being an electrician kind of threw me I'm thinking how does 240 volt and 12 volt and 24 volt all earth to the same thing um, but it does just simple as that so um, this cable here is a 240 volt earth cable goes directly to the body of the bus um, this bank here is a is a uh, 12 volt common earth um, plate uh, yeah so 12 volts so that again earth to the body of the bus the generator earths to the bus um, the body of the inverter and the body of the charge controller also earth to the bus body so everything earths no matter what the voltage or whether it's AC or DC so I think that's pretty much covers it as far as I can think of um, you know if you've got any questions ask so that pretty much covers it all the things I can think of anyway um, it was a it wasn't it wasn't a hard job um, to, to install for me what I found was just the unknowns because I'm not an electrician you know figuring out things like um, you know the thickness of the cable. Oh, here's a couple of things. Um, the main wiring in the bus, whilst it is the 2.5 mil three-core stuff, um, that's because it's such a big long run, and I've got so many power points. I think I've got about eight power points all up, um, and they're double power points. If you've got a shorter run, so I've got a short run here um, from the box just up to here to where the air conditioner is. I've only used 1.5 mil cable there, um, and also the um, the water heater, which is just down here, is just down below the bench here. Um, it's also 1.5 mil um, three core double insulated stuff. So it's a short, dedicated run just for the hot water system. So um, so that's that. Um, what else? Um, air conditioning. Uh, here's something I didn't. I saw a couple of videos on YouTube when I was doing my research and before I even bought the air conditioner 
um, people saying that they can run their air conditioner on with their solar system without plugging in and without running a generator and then other people were saying that no that's bullshit you can't actually do it or they, they're not doing what they think they're doing and all that sort of stuff um, with the setup that I've just shown you um, this is a it's a Demet Dometic um, air conditioner it's their inverter air conditioner I bought it specifically for that reason I bought it and the generator at the same time because someone was saying that um, they have one of these and their generator runs it fine um, so I thought if my solar system and battery and everything doesn't operate it, um, then at least I've got the generator to run it and you don't want to be in Australia living in a camper van or motorhome without air conditioning. Um, um, yeah, so uh, with the setup that I've just shown you and everything, I ran some tests on this. I can run this, I can start it, run it, and I'll show you. Turn that, turn it right down. 16 degrees uh, on the highest fan setting. 16 degrees. There we go. That so that started. Now I haven't installed a, a separate soft starter, which people are saying you needed to do. Um, so it's, not, it's at the lowest temperature, 16 degrees Celsius on the highest fan setting, started off the battery and the solar and where I was saying the generator won't cut in um, until the battery has dropped to 11.7 volts, um, I've, run, I've done a couple of tests on this and every time it has run at 16 degrees at high fan speed, for two, started and run for two hours completely before the generator kicked in. Um, and admittedly that was during the day. I don't know what it would be like at night time where I'm not getting any power off the battery, uh, sorry, off the solar panel. Um, yeah, but certainly during the day, no issues whatsoever. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. I don't think it's too noisy. Some people complain about the noise of these things, but I don't think it's too noisy at all. There we go. So, just to show you, I'll just show you what it looks like. There we go, so that's it there. Um, kind of touch screen type, well not, it's not a screen, but your controls are through here. It also has um, lights, if you want to use the lights. It comes with a remote control. Um, I don't know what I've done with my remote control, I've lost it, but um, somewhere. It'll, it'll turn up one day. Rightio, so I think that pretty much covers everything with regards to the electrics. Um, if you've, yeah, as I said before, if you've got any questions, um, yeah, just write me. I've got, I'm happy to answer any questions I can. Um, I really hope you found this information and this video useful. Um, if, you, if you've not subscribed yet um, and you want to see more videos like this about the bus and other things that I do or make, um, please subscribe. Um, give us a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment, constructive comment, or you know, just leave a comment. Um, let us know what you think. And uh, to the current subscribers, thank you very much, guys, for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Peace. Um, one other thing I did just remember um, for those people in New South Wales, where I'm living in Australia, if you're doing this sort of thing and um, thinking about um, certification. Uh, you will need certification to make it legal. Um, certification meaning it has to be looked at by a licensed electrician um, and your engineer will need to see that certification. The certificate you need is called a CCEW form. I don't remember what that stands for. Um, the electrician does know what that form is. They have to fill that out and they submit it with fair trading on every electrical job that they do. Um, the issue you're going to find if you do an installation yourself, or certainly the big issue I found mainly was that it was finding an electrician who was willing to come and certify an installation they didn't do. Um, and I had a range of reactions from just, you know, no, straight out no's to, you know, I had one guy really rip it up me over the phone and tell me I was going to kill myself and kill innocent children. It was basically what he said. Um, you know, but I eventually found um, one guy who was fantastic. And if, if you're in New South Wales on the Central Coast, um, let me know if you're looking for someone 
to uh, come and certify uh, your your installation, um, and I'll give you his name and number. Uh, he was fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's that.